All right, I've always wanted to build my dream Telecaster, so I'm just out here in the woods, and I think I found the perfect tree. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, question. What? Yeah, I know you pretty well, and I don't think you know how to turn a tree into a guitar. I mean, look at that hatchet. Might be good for carving a spoon or building a small campfire, but chopping down a tree? Give me a break. Also, also what? Well, you're not out in the woods, and this is your neighbor's tree. I know, but, but what? You know, the YouTube comments. YouTube comments, what about them? Oh, you built a Telecaster? Don't you mean you assembled one from parts, you f stupid loser? Unless you planted those f tree seeds, figured out how to live for an extra 300 years, became a master luthier, chopped down those trees, and then hand carved your own guitar, you didn't build sh You're a f fraud, and I hate your f clickbait guts. Die, f you giant piece of Oh, and you suck at guitar, your clean tones need more distortion, you look like a chihuahua mixed with a fat chimpanzee, I hate your mom. Oh, that's why you're out here? Mike, what do we say about people who take the time to be whiners on YouTube? That they're lame and we shouldn't listen to them? That's right. When they're done typing, their mom brings them meatloaf. You're talking about people whose primary skill in life is just being a troll online because they don't have the courage or talent to make anything themselves. You can't take these people serious. Now let's go inside and order things off the internet. It's better that way. You're right, let's do this. Hey, do you think that high five is gonna work in the edit? Oh, no. Let's talk Telecasters, more specifically, custom parts casters like this one. Now, if you saw my previous video on the Telecaster and the Les Paul Special, you'll know that the Telecaster is just kind of my all-time favorite guitar. I love the design, I love the legacy and the history of it, I love the sound. It's just, to me, a really captivating instrument. And so I'd been wanting, like, the Telecaster, you know, like, the one. And so I'd been trying a bunch, and there are so many good ones out there, you know, whether it's Fender or a Boutique Builder. In that stuff, there's so many incredible options. The downside is that to get exactly what I wanted, I was gonna have to spend like four grand. Um, and for me, I'm not a professional musician. I'm a very mediocre one who sits in a room and plays just because I love it. And so the idea of spending four grand on like a bolt-on guitar was just like a little bit of a stretch for me. So that led me down the rabbit hole of, well, what if I just made my own? Could I do that? What does that look like? What are the pros and cons? Uh, what parts do I need? Is it worth it? Should I just buy a regular guitar? All those questions we're gonna dive into right now. I think one of the biggest questions to answer before you start building your own guitar is why? And for me, I found out that I was having a daughter. And so it was kind of like this perfect moment where I was like, well, I kind of wanted to, to try this, but at the same time, it'd be really cool to have it done to sort of commemorate her birth. And then if she ends up getting into guitar someday, which she will, you know, this could be hers and what a, a cool tribute. And let's be honest, it was just a great excuse to get another guitar, so. And I think especially if this is your first build, answering that question of why do I wanna do this is really a good motivator through the whole thing because there are times when it's really frustrating, it can be confusing. Uh, and so if you understand that first, you know, I think it, it just helps align your expectations of what you're getting out of it. You know, some people wanna do it because they just, want the experience of putting one together and they learn more about their instrument. And that's great. Some people want to do it for a special occasion, like I did. Some people want to do it because they go, oh, well, if I do this, I'm going to save a bunch of money because I'm not buying a custom shop guitar. And that's sort of true, which we'll get into in a minute. So if you can answer that, I think it helps kind of keep you motivated and on course throughout the build. So what I want to do now is just go into everything that I used to put the guitar together. And like the end of any good date, we'll start at the neck work our way down. Yes, I'm going to reuse that joke as often as I can. Okay, first up, Fender locking tuners. Who cares? Moving on. The neck is quarter sawn, very flame maple by Musicraft with a dark Indian rosewood fretboard, aged clay dots. Um, it's got a 1.65 inch nut width, medium jumbo frets, uh, a nine and a half inch radius, and then it's got kind of a, a chunky C profile. It's not like a 52 telly 
size and it's not as big as my Les Paul Special, but you know, I don't have giant hands, but I kind of like a, a thicker neck. It just sits there really, really well for me. So I love this profile. It's got a very thin lacquer sealer uh, on the back. So it's super smooth. I love this neck. I think it plays incredibly well. I love the profile. The only thing that I wish was a little bit better considering the cost of it was the fretwork was okay. I'd give it like a B minus. They're a little bit sharp, but all of my Every other guitar that I own has better fretwork than this, and they're all production guitars, so that could have been a little bit better. The body is a lightweight Swamp Ash from MJT. Um, Mark and Jenny run that company, and they're awesome. I don't know them personally, but just dealing with them was really positive. I asked for a Candy Apple Red, but I sent Mark some pictures, and you know, because they can go like really dark red to almost like orangey, and I wanted the, the deeper color. So out of the light, it looks wine red, people think it's that color, which it does look like it, but in the light, it's got that candy apple sparkle to it um, and it lightens up. So I love this one. I got the closet classic finish. I have no problem with relics, um, but for me, I wanted to, to do that wear myself. Um, and so I've had this guitar for about a year now, just, just about a year. Um, and you know, it's, it's showing some wear. I played a ton. It's got a little bit of checking going on, but I think it's gonna age really, really well. It's a mint green pickguard, and I can't remember where I got it from, to be honest, somewhere online. The control plate is a 920D Custom, and it's a four-way, which I love because it gives both pickups in series and parallel. It gives you both options. So in this you know, fourth position, it's got that kind of humbucker sound to it, uh, which I really, really like. It's got a hip shot bridge with three saddles. Um, which I kind of was went back and forth. Should I get like a six saddle or a three? And I just like the traditional look. I know, you know, the intonation and all that stuff, but this does really, really well. It's close enough for me, honestly. I don't like do this and like measure sense constantly. It sounds fine for me. Um, the more uh, refined of you may care, but I just don't. And finally, the pickups. I started with some Gen 4 Noiseless by Fender and they were okay but I ended up putting in some custom shop twisted tellies and I love them. The neck has got a bit more of that stratty tone, but the bridge still has that kind of like dark, kind of angry growl to it. And when you blend them, it just sounds incredible. I love this. I would love to know though, um, if you have any feedback on good tele pickups, like I want to try some Lawlers. I've heard Klein makes some amazing Telecaster pickups. So if you have any recommendations for me, please put them in the comments because I do want to try out a, a couple more. Um, but for now, I'm really, really happy with how they sound. And speaking of sounds, I'm going to just run through the pickups briefly, just so we can hear what they sound like. All right, so really the big question is, is it worth it? And that's kind of a personal decision, but what I'm gonna do is run through some of the pros and cons that I experienced, and then you can kind of decide for yourself. So let's start with the pros. And the first one is um, a little bit vapid, <laughs> um, but it's really fun to shop for all the parts. Like it's really, really fun because it extends the buying experience of your guitar. You know, whether you, uh, you know, buy a guitar online or you walk into a shop and get one, you know, you kind of, 
go in and then you walk out and that's that, which is great. I mean, anytime you get a new guitar, it's an amazing day. But this time it was like, oh, I got to order the neck and then I ordered the body and then you order different pickups and pick guards. And like, you just get to go through this whole thing and kind of like obsess and nerd out over every last detail right down to the wiring. And it's a lot of fun. And for me, I bet I spent, I don't know, I bet I spent three or four months just looking at different options because I had no idea what I was doing. So for me, I had to learn a lot as I went um, and it was just a really fun experience. Two, you get exactly what you want. You know, there is no, well, I really love the neck, but you know, the pickups aren't great or, you know, I love this guitar, but I wish it had fill in the blank. You know, this you get truly exactly what you want and it's kind of a one of a kind thing. Like there, oh man, Sometimes I hit my light up here. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. There are plenty of candy apple red Telecasters, but this one, this one's mine. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I, I put this one together. This is my guitar and I really like that. Number three, it is substantially cheaper than buying a custom shop Tele or a boutique Tele or anything like that. And four, you really get a deep understanding of your instrument and exactly how it all works. I know every single screw, every wire, uh, every piece of wood, every piece of metal on this thing I put on here. Okay, so let's talk cons. Number one, it's still kind of expensive. Like you can do this for way cheaper than I did, but I kind of wanted to build like a really nice guitar. I wanted sort of the custom shop equivalent of a parts caster. Uh, and I really feel like I got that. So, you know, for me, even though it's way cheaper, than a custom shop guitar. It ended up being more money than I thought it was going to. Um, so just kind of be aware of that as you get into it. You know, there's there's a ton of ways to save money on this. You know, I got the flame maple neck, which you totally don't need. Um, I mean, the, the neck could have been half the price. The body is what it is. You know, depending on the, the components that you want to get, you could do this for way cheaper than I did it. Um, so yes and no, it's cheap, but not cheap. Two, it can be really frustrating at times, uh, especially, when it comes to soldering everything and actually doing the build. Um, you know, there are companies like Obsidian that they require absolutely no soldering for that stuff, which I learned after the fact, which would have been nice. Um, but, you know, I took all the parts from a Mexican standard telly and just practiced on them for a while. And the soldering thing was really a giant pain. I had to watch a bunch of YouTube videos. I screwed it up. Um, I probably burnt the crap out of the the pots and that kind of stuff on the first one. Uh, so learning how to do that was annoying um, and I don't I don't enjoy it. I know that it was great to learn how to do it, but it, it kind of sucked. Number three, this is a little bit vain, but also really true and that there is no Fender logo on the headstock. So is it a Telecaster? Yeah, it's the Telecaster shape. Is it a Fender? No. And for some people that bums them out. Um, I'm a little bit torn on it. I know people that will like build a parts caster and then put a Fender logo on that. But that's such a lame move to me. I, I would never do that um, because it's not a fender, which leads to number four. And the fact that it's because it's a parts caster, it has zero resale value. It's none. If you if I tried to sell this, I would take a bath. Um, but that's OK. I think if you know that going in, like I'm not I have no intention of selling this guitar ever. Like I built this because I wanted to have it for decades and then pass it on. And even when I'm dead, this thing hopefully is still making music. I, I don't wanna sell it. I'm never going to sell it. Um, so for me, that's not an issue, but some people, you know, they they build it and then they go to sell it. And it's like this super nice guitar. And everyone's like, it's a parts caster, give me a break. And you go, no, it's a really nice one. Go, I don't care, it's a parts caster. So the resale value on these is absolute garbage. So for me, I found the whole thing completely worth it. Just being able to put together my own guitar, I got exactly what I wanted and I have no intention of selling it that for me makes it very worthwhile. Even though there were definitely some cons, you know, all the pros just vastly outweighed that and I would totally do it again. I wanted to mention briefly that next week I'm actually doing a guitar giveaway. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and again, if you have pickup recommendations, please leave them for me in the comments. Um, I have a PRS, a Gibson Flying V and a Music Man Stingray. Uh, those are all in the works, so stay tuned. But now go play guitar.